have with us Tom Byers. He is a professor at Stanford teaching technology education. He's also the co-founder and director of Stanford Technology Ventures Program. And he has won the most distinguished award from Stanford, the Gores Award for Excellence in Teaching. Tom, pleasure to welcome you. Sure, thank you. Um, wanted your take. I just spoke to um, another gentleman who was focusing on uh, spreading entrepreneurship globally through Kaufman Foundation. Mm. But your take is more on uh, education and uh, bringing out entrepreneurs through education. It's a very great concept. Stanford is at the forefront of uh, not only research, but converting the research into products and creating entrepreneurs. Yeah. So I wanted your take on the emphasis of education. Well, because it's uh, both are necessary, right? You want breakthroughs in uh, science and technology, uh, big paradigm shifts like we've all experienced in our lifetimes, like the internet or uh, the research in biotechnology. Now we'd like to see it happen in energy technology for everybody's good. But just breakthroughs in science and technology is not enough. And it takes human beings to then accelerate those breakthroughs into products and services and uh, that sort of, sort of thing for the benefit of all. Uh, I think uh, what we're celebrating today or discussing today is the, the role of the entrepreneur or entrepreneurial team, is maybe is the right way to put it, because it's always a team um, in that acceleration. It turns out that entrepreneurship and innovation can be taught. Uh, originally, business schools did it. Uh, as a start, as a pioneer. Education uh, of, about entrepreneurship uh, was uh, relegated, if you will, or, or incubated might be the right way to put it, um, in a wonderful way by business schools. What's been uh, good to see now, thanks to um, those of us who are con concerned about this, and, and include, you know, with wonderful support from people like the Kauffman Foundation and others, um, now science and engineering students are, are learning this topic while they're getting their degrees in science and engineering. And that's, uh, that's a good thing. Uh, whether they become founders of companies or not is not relevant. It's, it's that they develop these skills uh, to think like an entrepreneur no matter what they do. Whether they serve in business, whether they serve uh, uh, in a, uh, you know, a public service, or whether they even become educators themselves. You know, Stanford is very unique in this, and it is, like I said, part of the internal fabric of Silicon Valley. Um, and a lot of other universities around the world try to emulate this role model. Um, how do you think if other universities, especially in the emerging uh, economies, want to emulate this model of Stanford's education, which is yeah. not just research, but incubation and then bringing out to the market. Yeah, well, I mean, it, so there's a lot, that's a question that is uh, well researched and lots of people have opinion. I, I'll just take one, and it's a very co comprehensive um, uh, situation. I mean, it has many, many facets. But, so I'm going to just take one slice out of it. It, it, it one, one fundamental or necessary condition is the education system. To, to embrace this. And this is difficult because we professors are, we're hard to change. I mean, you, think, uh, you think governments are hard to change and others. I mean, professors, are, you would think, you know, being a sort of uh, scholarly and uh, intellectual in a way, we get, in, uh, we get stuck in our ways as well. And uh, it, it's, it's really a fascinating journey to, to uh, work with those pioneers, those uh, activists within universities, not just here in the Bay Area and, and, and what, you know, the Berkeleys and the Stanfords and that sort of thing, but with our counterparts and peers around the uh, world to encourage those, the teaching and the, uh, and the research, frankly, of what it means to be a great innovator, what it means to be a great entrepreneur. There's a lot of knowledge to be gained. There's already, there's a lot of knowledge just to recognize, but there's a lot of knowledge still to be gained about how to optimize on that and how to, uh, uh, you know, how to uh, best teach this material to young people. Now I'm talking about, you know, college students and, and recent grads. Uh, if, if we can just change, you know, one little trajectory, that person might be uh, the, uh, the, the, you know, the key to creating the Google of energy. Um, and it doesn't necessarily have to come from Stanford or, or Berkeley, my alma mater here in the Bay Area. It could come from India, it could come from China, it could come from... Uh, Italy, like the uh, fellow that's speaking on the panel right now. You know, um, Stanford also attracts a lot of international students 
Go so on. I'll take two examples, China and India. Uh, across America and universities, you have influx of these students. Yeah. Uh, but US is behind countries like Singapore and Finland in terms of K-12 education. Mm -hmm. yeah. But it's far ahead of countries like India and China in terms of K-12 education. But how do you think students from these countries, especially India and China, can come and compete at the same level with other students who have already had? Yeah, well, I'm no expert in, uh, in K-12 education for sure, nor the uh, macro issues related to even higher education. But I will tell you this. Uh, you know, it's funny to put the labels, you know, students from China or from India or here, you know, or Texas or anywhere. They're just all young people. And they grew up in a completely different paradigm than you and I did. I mean, because of the internet and um, th that kind of connectivity, the world is much closer than you think, at least the developed world um, that, you know, those are the countries we're referring to. And it, it the skills that they need to uh, learn and while they're getting their degrees what in whatever, engineering, science, uh, I don't know, history, uh, the, the skills such as how to work effectively on a team. That, that is, you don't, just because you're born in a particular area doesn't mean you somehow were born with the DNA to be a good member of a team. I mean, this is the sports analogies here are perfect. I mean, that's why you see sometimes in World Cup, you know, you see a, a, t a, a group of athletes who perform at a much higher level than anybody expected because the, and they always say, well, it's because the team gel and the people with all the superstars, I won't name which country, but you know, the one with all the superstars, you know, they don't perform very well because they don't, they did not play the team. Well, let's take, for example, Beijing with the American uh, basketball team. You know, they finally, played as a team and were very successful uh, in winning the gold medal. So, so it doesn't matter whether they're from China, India, or, or United States, it turns out you can teach teamwork. Uh, and that is a fundamental component of innovation. I mean, creativity is important, how to be creative and see things that others don't and change rules. But if you don't have a team, um, then you know all the creativity in the world just means nothing. So it turns out you can actually teach that. It's not easy, and all of us are in, who are involved in that uh, uh, pursuit, uh, or you know, we're trying lots of th new things and how to how to do that. What kinds of materials? What kind of classroom uh, work? But if we can do that, then it really doesn't matter where anybody's from because they're all global citizens. I mean, the problems are so enormous in this uh, century. You know, the sustainability issues and the. Uh, the health care issues and the peace and security is they're so enormous. It's going to take something special to, to, uh, to solve them. And, uh, and that'll be uh, some combination of breakthroughs in science and technology, but also a lot of entrepreneurial capitalism as we're, we're hearing uh, you know, in the meeting today, which can be taught. It can be taught. You know, at least we feel that way. Right. Thank you so much for sharing the advice. Oh, I appreciate well, your you. time. I appreciate the opportunity to do this. Right. Thank I you. Really do. Thanks. Thanks.